Over the past year, we've taken you behind the scenes at T-Sport line for countless Tesla DIYs. From yokes. This is the money shot. Wow. To wheels. And headlights. To taillights. And instrument clusters to rear screens. Check out our DIY playlist here and link below for those videos. And after seeing so many different mods at different Tesla events, it really has me wondering how far is too far? Like, is there a point that these mods become unsafe? And are there certain mods that you should never do? The most popular question that I get on my mods videos are do these void warranty? Today we'll break down which mods you should never do on a Tesla. You may have seen this guy. Ellie's the co-founder of T-Sport Line who knows more about this stuff than just about anyone. He was even there in the Roadster days and in the room when the Model S was unveiled over a decade ago. Yes! Do you have any inside scoop on what you guys have planned for Cybertruck? Hey, Sam, I got no this access. is top secret. I got, I got no access. Though. I'm the co-founder. I don't even have access. Now you guys do. One of the most common mods that most Tesla owners wish just came with the way Teslas were built is an automated front trunk. It doesn't even come with this $100,000 EV. Of course, there are plenty of other EVs in this price range that do come with it, but not this one. Also, you have to close your Model X different than you would close a Model 3 and Y, and people botch it all the time. Now there's plenty of aftermarket parts like simply changing out struts, which are fine, but the experts say stay away from the fully motorized options as it's just not worth it. While we would love to offer that, there's been a history of those catching on fire, causing problems with the wiring. Absolutely. And Tesla had a lot of like service bulletins about this years ago. So we at t sport lately we just avoided that space. And I think that applies to power trunks also. Yes. Right? Model exactly. 3 that doesn't have a power really? trunk, especially early ones. So it's invasive. That's the problem. You know, installing it, it's not unfortunately plug and play. You're actually splicing and cutting into the harness of the car. So at that point, you've actually now voided the warranty of your harness. That's for sure. Whether the product works safely long term, that's another question. And to add even more complexity to everything, Tesla is always changing very subtle features. In fact, Elon once said they make as much as 20 small engineering changes and improvements all over the car each week. 2023 model Ys, the driver's seat pattern has changed because of an improvement in safety reasons. With an airbag now, an added airbag, well, an interior kit needs to be prepared to act properly accordingly if an airbag were to deploy. It depends on which Tesla factory built the car. Right. So we're realizing now this new Austin-based Model Y, while it looks kind of the same to the to the owner on the outside, as soon as we start pulling pieces off, we realize, wow, this changed. So we now have had to revise product and make it where, is it the original Model Y or is it one that was built out of Austin? And these are internal changes you would never know. Hard like as the dashboard. We actually have a dashboard right here we could take a look at coincidentally, but this is a this is a Model Y dashboard like out of your car. And you probably remember from your yeah. DIY install of this, you had push pins. The one from Austin now has bolts instead of push pins. So anything that we had that worked with this now has to be revised for Austin. Very wow. typical for us. So how do you ask the questions of consumers that are going to buy these things? Because you know, how do they prevent, like, possibly buying the wrong one? You can look in your app. You can look at the VIN. You can contact us, and we can decipher, based on the letters in your VIN, which plant that car came from. I think they actually identify that uh, one of the mid letters is an F for Fremont right. or an A for, for Austin. Austin. Correct. Oh, interesting. Um, oh, wait, you got to be authorized to get in here. This, 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 is, saying, no this is top secret. I got, I got no I, secret stuff. I'm the co-founder. I don't even have access. <laughs> now you guys do. Wait, what is all this going on? You have so much going on. Every time I come here, I feel like... So, look, here's the truth. We do a lot of R&D in Atlanta, and I, I am an engineer by training, so I am, like, deep into this. We actually create, develop, spec, engineer this stuff ourselves. We're not just buying it and relabeling it, so things are actually born in this office, for real. This is some behind-the-scenes... Uh, science fair looking stuff but this is engineering equipment that lets us plug into the dash and we can actually control like different functions so this emulates what a tesla does so we can plug this into the dash and then if we need to change the gear selection or we need to test charge door 
like this will actually make the signal that the Tesla would normally make in the lab or in my office so we could plug in a screen prototype and, and make these things work. That's crazy. And who makes this? Like we where do you, you make that yeah, whole? Yeah. This is, this this is like you engineering tools that ended up resulting in this product. That's so cool. Let's this is where we're taking the cars apart. We're developing products. We're testing. I hear one of our engineers back here doing something. So maybe we'll get a look and see. Oh, and then we have this little beauty that might catch your eye over here. <laughs> yes. So rolling test bed right here. This has been used to develop whether it's wheels, brakes, lowering kits. We right now, we, we tested our new wrap. This is actually not a red car. This is a black car. Tesla just came out with the ultra red, right? For model S and X in the US, soon to be three and Y. Multi-code red's going away. So this is our brand new in-house film that we developed. Uh, it's called T-Max. And this is our vision of ultra red. So for those of you that maybe want to go ahead and have that new updated kind of cherry look, candy apple look. This is very similar to Ultra ultra Red. But as Brian was saying, when he opened up the doors, you could see this initially was a black car. And typically, while we can, we usually don't wrap the door jams when we're doing a color change wrap. So what is this material again? This is, it's not a vinyl? It is vinyl film, yes. Okay. It is color change vinyl film. Um, it's part of our new house brand called T-Max. And it's very special because as you could see, it lays up so much like paint. Usually when you wrap a car and there's some great companies out there, no doubt, 3M, Avery, Denison, they've been there since day one. But unfortunately, some of their gloss colors don't lay up like paint yeah. and they don't look so great when they're up close. We love them from five steps away. This was developed to bring you that, that, that appearance, like as if you had painted the car, but for a fraction of the cost. I do see a comment that comes up all the time, which is I, I wanted both of you guys here to help us answer some of these questions. And one of the things I think a lot of people are really curious about is warranty and how your warranty is affected when you do modify your car. Federal law protects the rights of consumers, the people that own the cars. They, it's not legal for an OEM to require you to use factory replacement parts. You're free to buy factory replacement parts or aftermarket parts. And by the same law, an OEM automotive manufacturer cannot deny you warranty simply on the premise that you put an aftermarket part in the car. So the way the law works is let's say you bought wheels from us at T-Sport line and we put them on your Tesla. They're obviously not Tesla parts, even though we make them to fit Tesla, they're not made by Tesla. Tesla cannot deny the warranty on your vehicle, Blake it across the vehicle because you've modified it, put aftermarket parts on. The only thing they could do is say, okay, if we if you put T-Sport line wheels on, we can't warranty your wheels, which is obvious because there are wheels. But if your, let's say your air conditioning stopped working or you had a problem with your battery, there's no way legally that the OEM can deny you warranty just because you put on aftermarket parts. So this has been going on for a long, long time. There's a federal law that protects this. And this Magnuson Moss Act, which is the federal law, is what protects you as the consumer. So if you need any help with it, we can help you at T-Sport Line. But rest assured, if you own the car, you're free to modify it, and it will not void your warranty simply on the premise that you chose to put aftermarket parts on. All right. Are there any aftermarket parts, though, that would void warranty? Well, the way it works is if the aftermarket part directly causes a warranty, then certainly they can deny that warranty. So let's go through an example. Let's say you put on like a power frunk upgrade. If you had a problem with your hood hinges or something that the wiring that was connected to those, then they can deny the warranty around that component. This is arguably the finest equipment. Uh, most Tesla service centers actually use this equipment themselves. This is again, one of those things that you wouldn't tackle as a DIY. You yeah, can have no. to bring it in flower. Right. We never want to touch the face of the wheel. A lot of tire shops will take a cone that comes down here and touches this, and it's a real risk you're going to scratch it, or they'll use metal tools to pull the tires on and off. We don't do any of that. So the wheel is on the machine. We're going to come down through here. We're not touching the wheel at all. This locks into place in the machine. And then we have a slider down here that tightens this up. So this is a special fixture that goes in here, and it's going to push down on the exact spot where the lug nuts would push down. So we never, again, we never use 
what you would find is a traditional tire shop that comes down with a co like a plastic cone and then could potentially scratch the surface. We were at the takeover. Yes. yes. Uh, we got to see the Model X out there with the Tiffany blue interior. And my Model X was feeling a little bit jealous. And one of the things that I've been thinking about doing is putting orange seatbelts in. These are just like the ones that come. Yeah, the Webby that comes with, with the uh, seatbelts in the Tesla. Okay. So we, we remove those and, and preserve them in case you ever want to go back to stock. Okay. But we'll hear what All the right. audience has to say. I think these so we, we only use, this is Tesla OEM mm -hmm. seatbelts. So we take a stock Tesla unit and then we use a proper OEM grade uh, replacement here. So this is this is actually a... okay. So I want to like you know how does this look? Does it look good with my complexion? Like you know, I mean I I just well, what think... colors interior of your X white? It's white. Right? It's white. Oh, that'll look really good. So this would be like the color pop. Yeah. And then you know I might have to do something with the wheels and the calipers to match. Let us know in the comments what you think about these. And then this kind of leads into my next question because I want to talk about. Like I've done a lot of DIYs now, but there's certain DIYs that the average person probably shouldn't tackle. And this might be one of those. This Correct. is not something yeah. that you can just do yourself. Would this void your warranty? It's a great question. No, the only part of this that Tesla wouldn't warranty would be the Webby. belt itself. Yep. But this is a Tesla component. We haven't modified it. There's no way to say, oh, well, because you've retrofit a different color seatbelt web, that it would be proper for them to, to deny the warranty of, say, your seat itself. If your seat stopped working or stopped moving, it's not because of a seat belt. But that would be an example of where you may wonder, hey, can I put these in and am I going to lose the warranty on my power seats? Nope, they're totally disconnected. That is crazy. And furthermore, really, to become either further transparent, the manufacturer of this webbing actually manufactures for OEM car companies. So this isn't just some fabric that looks like a seat belt or it's officially called webbing. Um, it, it really is. And the supplier of this material has more than proven itself, which is why we've aligned with them safely. At the takeover, did you guys get a chance? I know that your booth was so busy. So you probably, I don't even know if you had a chance to leave, but did you walk over to where they had all the like really modded Teslas at all? Um, Cause there was a lot going on there. The fact that there was this whole corral second year in a row with these ultra uber modded Teslas, predominantly Model 3 and Y, is incredible. I mean, it's so cool that that category, that that consumer, that demographic that traditionally flocked to other cars, right? There's been other versions of that dating back to, you know, American lowriders, right? Fast forward to Asian import cars, right? For that whole hot import nights thing of anything. Who would have ever thought, and I, I'm sure Elon did not think that there's going to be this movement of followers in this category that's very extreme. And I enjoyed seeing it. You know, some of these guys like to push the envelope, but that's okay because, you know, they probably came from that from maybe another car club or another type of car over the years or through family members. So maybe these are not even daily drivers, some of them. They're super cool. Some are really, really low. And um, I think it's exciting to see people embrace the EV market and have this sense of freedom to make it their way guys look at here's my video this is insane from the front trunk you'll know that i've been driving tell us what you've done uh well i took a regular tesla and i drive every day in this car so it's my daily commuting car basically to and from work i drive a lot like 150 miles a day in this thing and uh essentially i went through a dust storm and they totaled my car out I fought for a second opinion and I ended up at a, wrap, at, a, at a custom shop basically. Essentially what happened is they tried to redo the whole car back to stock but instead I chose to customize it for half the price and the insurance company obviously approved that because they pay less and they save a customer and the car. So I saved the car's life and since then I've been invited to SEMA and uh, that's when this came about. So Tesla takeover last year was the first year I influent I introduced the what the frunk. Okay. Uh, and since then, it's gone through a little bit of an upgrade. I added about 500 LEDs into it, which you can now see coloring around. In the night, it's even better. I've put air suspension on it, so to lower it down to the ground, I've added a custom leather handmade 
carbon fiber yoke and a 10 and a half inch dash screen swivel. I mean, I've pretty much done everything, either most of the aftermarket stuff you can do, and I customize my own air suspension. And you do it yourself? I do most of this work all by myself, yeah. yes, with some help of friends, obviously, yeah. but yes. So this car is daily driven, right? So the kicker is, is this thing here goes from show to go. Essentially with three cords, I unhook them and I have my frunk again. With my air suspension in the rear, it's in the sub trunk. I still use my full trunk of my car every day. I drive to and from LA to Charger Games, back and forth, and I need the space for everything I take. Awesome, I love it. It's so cool, one of, one of a kind. It is so unique and I don't know, it's inspiring. When I see this, I love when people take their Teslas, they turn them into their own, they do whatever the hell they like, and they make it beautiful. I am sure that Elon loves the aftermarket. He recently tweeted, he's like, hey, when the Cybertruck comes out, I can't wait to see what the aftermarket will do this. He tweeted something along those lines. So he knows that we're, we can't wait to get our hands on that yeah. and personalize yeah. it and upgrade it. And Elon, he's a car guy. Like, yeah. He's owned some of the best cars in the past. He definitely is into this. And when he tweeted, like, I can't wait to see what the aftermarket does to the Cybertruck, I'm like, this is awesome. All right. So on that note, do you have any, like, inside scoop on what you guys have planned for Cybertruck? Well, you're probably, I don't know if we're lucky or unlucky. If John was here, who heads our product development, he would be able to tell you quite a bit about what is up our sleeve for Cybertruck. Let's just say that we have some pretty exciting things in the works. And I think we should keep it under wraps until we start seeing them on the street. That's That's my opinion. Okay. Sorry, Kim. Okay, okay. You'll be maybe the first to know, but maybe not to. I don't know. What do you guys want to see? What do you <laughs> yeah, want to see? Yeah, what do you guys want to see first on Cybertruck? Yeah, definitely put that in the comments below. And if sure. you have a Cybertruck on order, um, like, comment Cybertruck. I just want to see how many of you guys have one on order. And, you know, over the past 10 years, unfortunately, there have been plenty of instances where we're this close and we're doing some testing and we have production samples and we have to scrap the whole thing because it just wasn't right sometimes it's right back to the drawing boards but until we could perfect it and make it safe and easy especially some of the diy items it's a no-go for us are there any items that you can share that are like you kind of got to this point you're really excited about it but you're just like it doesn't quite meet our yes. quality standards the number one and i'll never forget this was our fbr the front bumper refresh from model s john and i had this vision years ago to go ahead when tesla got rid of the nose cone and this became really cool there were so many Model S cars out there that still had that plastic nose cone. You know, we knew that people would want to have that upgraded look. It's been part of the aftermarket industry for years to upgrade the face of your car, right? Mm -hmm. So we started working on this and we spent a lot of time and a lot of money to come to market with this FBR to make sure that it was manufactured in the right type of factory that's going to meet crash test standards, that's going to be approved by body shops there's a whole standard around that and we get our samples and we have a fitment issue and that's because unfortunately at that time there was a lot of changes with tesla on those early models and the way some of the internal parts were fitting it fit our fbr and in some cases it did it so we had to literally go back to you know the drawing board as they say uh we spent even more money to go ahead and make sure this comes to market we successfully did so and it's a wonderful product that's been safe and enjoyed by owners around the world for quite some time now. But boy, was that a learning lesson and proof of really what our motto is. We, we're kind of cutting our teeth on the Rivian. So when Cybertruck comes out, we're, we're already into the truck scene. But on the Tesla side of things, I think that everybody has enjoyed personalizing and upgrading them. It's just there's so many threes and whys that that tends to be the most popular. And what kind of stuff, like question do you guys get um, you know, when you get calls for customer service or questions, do you guys see the most of? I mean, the first thing I think we see and deal with every single day is, you know, the, the consumer actually really values our opinion and asks us questions like, what color wheels do you think would look best on my car? If you were picking which one would you do? If this is your car. So we have been wanting to change out the interior of the Model 3 for some time now. We love the white, but the white is so popular that there are so many different options. The issue I'm having is that what my husband wants and what I want are two different things. So I'm hoping that you guys can help us decide. I'm throwing a lot of decisions at you um, and we'll see what the people have to say. Here's my vote. 
And we pride ourselves in giving that type of guidance on not just the look, right? And we're all have different opinions. You know, we're there to answer your calls on the phone. We, we, we make ourselves available to you uh, as much as we can. Sometimes we get a little bit overwhelmed, but we do do a very good job to stay in touch and answer everybody's questions. And then also to educate the consumer on, because they ask us this all the time too, well, can I go ahead and put this tire on the car instead of the one you recommend? Or can I use a different wheel? What do you think about a competitor's wheels? We actually get those questions and you know, we're, we're pretty transparent about the answers on that. Okay, let's answer those yeah, questions yeah. while yeah, we're yeah. at it. So like... while we're at it, um, I think there's a couple rules, simple rules you should keep in mind. And that is just because it fits, doesn't necessarily mean it's the right application. So with tires, keeping it simple, uh, they need to be an XL rated tire, right? That's that's for our heavy Teslas. Our Teslas are heavier than normal cars. So while there might be another tire by the same manufacturer or one that maybe we don't offer, just because it's the right size, it might not have the right load rating. And that's what's really important when you're choosing a tire, okay? Um, if you don't have the right load rating, well, now you're more susceptible to blowouts at pop, potholes and poor road conditions. That tire is going to give because of the sidewall, right? That's where its weak point is on that. And then that plays the same role with wheels. You know, there's Tesla has a bolt pattern that they share with other car manufacturers on fitment. So a lot of times we get questions, oh, XYZ company has wheels that will fit my car. And I'm like, you know what? They will. But here's, again, that simple question you have to ask yourself. And we're here to educate. And that is... Load rating. We're designer manufacturers of our wheels. We want to make sure we make our wheels to fit your Tesla and your Tesla is heavy. So while it could fit another car, we don't care about that. Mm -hmm. Unlike other car manufacturers that may make a wheel to fit multiple bolt patterns, but they don't take into consideration how heavy our Teslas are. And that's the same concern. Poor road conditions and potholes. You could bend or crack or, you know, break your wheels. And to further help the consumer and make things safe, we go one step further. And the majority of our wheels are Flowforged. Flowforged is a, is a stronger and lighter manufacturing process compared to a cast wheel, which is the way Tesla manufactures their wheels and most car companies do. It's the norm. It's the, pretty much the industry standard. We spend more money to make things stronger and lighter. And again, make sure it fits the car with no adapters and things like that. So do you have one thing that you would love to do by like anything in mind that's like, this would be, I really want to make this mod. I haven't quite figured it out yet, but I'm on, this is, I want that. I want to figure out how to do it. Uh, I mean, Anything you can talk about. You might have right. it in here, but you might not right. be ready to share it. I could tell you, I am an overlanding off-road type guy. And my interest in pushing the limits of what we can do with the Model Y and the Model X off-road is very interesting. And I think Cybertruck is going to push us in that direction, but... We want to take some of that overlanding, adventuring, and move that further into Model 3, Model Y, and give people the opportunity to go play with these cars and have fun with them. Yeah. For me, it's going to be all Cybertruck. I have never owned a truck in my life. I think maybe I've only driven my grandfather's truck once in my life. And I think I had a blowout, actually. I try to be cool, take it off-road with street tires. But uh, can't talk about Cybertruck yet. But trust me, there's so many amazing things coming, and I'm super excited about it very soon. I can't very wait soon. to go visit Ellie and Beverly Hills and drive around in this new Cybertruck. Yes. How many pre-orders do we have? Like four? Four. We have four Cybertrucks on order. From the night of the of the surprise unveiling, right? Yeah. So we were there. We ordered right there. and It's a little crazy. The website was actually crashing. I remember. That no, I had ordered for one, and I remember yeah. crashing and all that stuff. But I feel like you guys are going to be one of the first to actually so. get yours. That's so, so that's the plan. Yeah, we we're might already all be working. We might all be flying out there to um, check out your cyber. Truck. Absolutely, nine hundred two one zero cyber truck takeover. <laughs> I love it. Let's make it happen. Yes.